First off, I want to make it clear that this video is sponsored by AMD and Overclocks UK. And in it, I get to have the, the chance to play with this beast of a graphics card, an RX 6900 XT, specifically the Gigabyte Gaming OC model, and pair it with an AMD Ryzen CPU. Oh, and talk about some of their brand new driver features. The CPU I've picked to pair with AMD's top-end GPU is the Ryzen 5600X. And no, I, I'm not crazy, I promise, because I think you'll be surprised at just how well this pairing does. But first, let's take a look at the GPU. Like I said, this is the Gigabyte RX 6900 XT Gaming OC, meaning that it runs its 5120 stream processors up to 2285 MHz on its full boost, or around 2050 MHz at its game clock. The whopping 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM is plenty for even 4K gaming, and yes, that is three 8-pin PCIe power connectors. The stock card has a typical board power of about 300 watts, although this being the OC model, the overclock model, I would expect that to be a, a touch higher, and of course, if you want to push your overclock even higher, then you'll be glad to have that extra connector, well, included. The gaming OC card is definitely triple slot and triple fan as well, which does a good job of keeping it plenty cool, even with a, a little overclock on top. Of course, what modern card would be complete without some RGB lighting or a stylish metal backplate? So of course, both of those are included here too. On the back you get uh, two DisplayPort 1.4a ports and two HDMI 2.1 ports, and both of those support both variable refresh rate, or VRR, and fixed rate link, or FRL. As for my choice of chip to pair with this thing, you might think that I'm pretty mad pairing this with a 6-core CPU, but I, I genuinely think you'll be surprised here. Now, I'm not suggesting that this should be your, your ideal recommended configuration. If you've got the cash to splash on, well, a Halo tier GPU, it is worth matching their, their class a little better with something like the Ryzen 5900X, but I want you to, to I want to see if you really need to go that far. Luckily, pairing the 6900XT with any Ryzen CPU has its benefits. Of course, there is AMD's Smart Access Memory, which allows the CPU to access all of the graphics card's massive amount of VRAM or video memory at once, something that's especially important for higher settings and higher resolution gaming. On top of Smart Access Memory or SAM, you will of course be using the all new AMD software driver suite, including the new Adrenaline Edition graphics driver. This just launched yesterday and brings some great new features like Radeon Super Resolution or RSR. That is a, an in-driver upscaling tool that works with pretty much any game to boost your performance without the need for trained AI models or even specific game engine support. Of course, if your game supports Fidelity FX, Super Resolution, or FSR instead, you will be better off using that, but the inclusion of an option that will work with virtually any game you own is really nice to see. AMD is also just about to launch FSR 2.0 to help improve the image quality even further, so do stay tuned for that when it's out. The other thing that I love about AMD's graphics driver is the performance tab. In here, you have a complete tuning tool, which if you have both a Ryzen CPU and AMD GPU, they can both be overclocked from here with a single click. I hit the auto overclock button, the system restarted, and when it loaded back up, the driver informed me that it successfully added 200 megahertz to the CPU clocks and set the GPU to an astonishing 2584 megahertz, 2584 megahertz, up from the stock 2285 megahertz, which is, uh, I think that's like 13% higher with a single click. 
all of course for free, included with a graphics driver. But that's enough talking, let me get these two into a system and we can uh, play a game or two and then take a look at more detailed the performance and also see if our 5600X is, well, actually a sane choice or not. So I thought I'd play a little bit of Cyberpunk as it's a game that I haven't played in a little while and it's had a pretty massive update since the last time that I played it, uh, and it also features uh, AMD's FSR 1.0, so that's not bad. I have it set to 1440p at uh, high textures and uh, medium settings, and FSR set to auto, and first of all, looks great, and second, we're, we're, we are running at something like 150 to 160 FPS, depending on sort of where I am, what I'm doing kind of thing, which is great, and looks great on this, oh dear. Uh, 1440p 165 hertz display so it's a pretty decent experience for sure um, unfortunately I'm not the best at uh, video games in general I also haven't played any video games in uh, far too long uh, and so what that means is that uh, I'm not fantastic at this but I don't know it, it plays well which is the nice thing and uh, I'm just gonna see if I can sort of sneakily well get everybody without dying for the 800th time uh, it's unlikely but that guy and there's the guy down there come on 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 reload before he discovers the body there we go come on nice did I do it is that it I think that might be it Yes! And we're still getting 140 FPS even in this uh, rather densely packed area. Not bad. But let's take a look at what the uh, the performance well ends up playing like on other titles as well. In terms of more benchmarked performance numbers, playing at 1440p high settings, Shadow of the Tomb Raider sees a pretty excellent 186 FPS average while using our 5600X and 193 FPS average with the 5900X, which was of course equally overclocked with AMD's driver. While that is a, well, just shy of 10 FPS difference, it's well above even the 165 hertz limit that most 1440p monitors will cap at. So unless you have one of the fancy 240 hertz options, I would call that perfectly fine and still relatively close. Watch Dogs Legion is even closer, just four FPS split between the two in both the average and 1% low figures. Cyberpunk sees an almost exact match, with the 5600X technically coming out slightly ahead, although it's well within margin of error and there's going to be more difference in just where you are and what you're doing in game, so no big deal there. CSGO shows another about 10 FPS lead for the 5900X, but we're talking about the difference between 503 FPS and 514, so personally I'm not exactly worried there. Microsoft Flights is also functionally a tie, albeit with a 5900X taking a lead in the 1% lows. And finally, in Fortnite, we are back to the around 10 FPS leader gap. Although again, it's the difference between 258 FPS and 267. So even a 240 hertz 1440p gamer won't be affected. So, in short, this card is a beast. Even a 5600X can do a great job of gaming with it, and AMD's drivers are back offering even more great features. If by some miracle you can afford a card like this, then you can rest assured you're going to have a great time gaming with it, especially when paired with a Ryzen CPU and AMD software. Thanks again to AMD and Overclockers UK for sponsoring this video. If you want to pick up a 6900 XT, or maybe more like a 6600 XT, that'd be my, my personal recommendation at the moment for the vast majority of gamers, or a Ryzen CPU like the 5600 X or 5900 X I've been using here, then check out the Overclockers UK links in the description down below. And of course, thank you to you guys for watching. Of course, if you have any questions, suggestions, or things you want to mention, then feel free to leave those in the comments down below. 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon to be notified of all the new videos from me. And feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.